First time I've seen him accompanied by a beautiful young lady, one of the young Southern Bell debutantes, no doubt, because he is used to the first class and everything they have, and she is a very attractive young lady. He's waiting right now for Steve Ricard to come to the ring. You know something, I've never seen King Jerry Lawler in better shape than he is today. He must have taken off about 20 pounds. And he's going to be a lot more and I tell you, he really, he's looking young. A right contract now. problem with his left. He's really worked, uh, he's worked hard. He was a former champion. He wants to work his way right back up that ladder and get that title back. Well, he's, he's going for a good title tonight. Uh, I mean, this is the British Commonwealth of New Zealand Championship, which is held by Steve Ricard. And I'll tell you what, that title is the same in the Commonwealth Islands as Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore, and through there as our World Heavyweight Championship that uh, Dusty Rhodes now has in America. Ladies and gentlemen, so he's, he's, got, he's got a lot of prestige attached to that belt and a lot of money. And King Jerry Lawler, who himself is a world traveler, would love to pick up that belt and the money that goes with it. Well, I tell you right now, he's uh, he's strutting around. Uh, I believe that uh, here comes Mr. Ricard right now. Steve Ricard, definite ring veteran, on his way to the ring. I understand he just flew in, caught about the last plane here. Do that. King Jerry Lawler says for a psychological advantage. Well, he better watch himself because I can tell you right now that uh, he can uh, be in a lot of trouble with Mr. Ricard because he is a wily veteran and he knows his wrestling. 
Yes, indeed. Steve Ricard doesn't hold that belt uh, just because he, you know, he, he walked into the store and bought it. No, sir. He wrestled for that, and he's going to defend it tonight. Well, I'll tell you, I was a former holder of that Commonwealth title a few years ago, and I'll tell you, that belt covers the whole area of my old so you know how big and silver and heavy that river is. Worth a lot of money. Referee Sammy Sampson. Second. I don't suppose that... There's, there's the bell, and uh, okay, checking for upstairs three. No, no problem there. A little more uh, problem there. Uh, harassment here by Stevie Jerry Lawler. He's trying to spike up Mr. Ricard, but he's not going to do it. Well, let's see, there's a wide revenge. Well, let's see, I would say that uh, Steve Ricard has got experience on his side. Hey, 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 Every time. All right. Tell you what. Uh, right now, let's uh, let's find out what Al Harrington's comments are about this match. You know, Al, uh, we've got uh, two gladiators here that I I think you'll be interested in. King Jerry Lawler. He's from the East Coast, and of course, yeah. the Steve Ricard from New Zealand. And uh, both of these guys are very experienced wrestlers. What do you think about it? Well, it's it's kind of like the Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. You know, the guy with the came in with the crown and the pretty girl. But he's got a, it seems to be, a, got, seems like he's got a lot of cement. Well, he's definitely uh, using uh, the finesse for psychological advantage. Yeah. He's, uh, he's shouting at the referee, he's shouting at the crowd. Steve Ricard, though, doesn't seem to be having too much of it. He's just saying, come on, let's get in yeah. there and wrestle. Well, you know, those guys from New Zealand are sheep herders. They don't say much. They uh -huh. just watch the sheep. I see. And uh, <laughs> possibly Jerry Lawler uh, may be the... Uh, the sheep or, or could, could turn out to be the ram. You <laughs> never can tell in this match. Oh, man. King Jerry Lawler, a very, very devastating wrestler. Knows the scientific yeah. wrestling. Look at him grabbing that wristwatch. Holding yeah. it up. All of these guys have generally had experience from the uh, high school and then the college level. And there's some of them in the Olympic experience, you know. That's true. But uh, I'm not sure about these two guys. The, the New Zealanders, as uh, Ripper said earlier, has, has age. And uh, wisdom and experience, you bet. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Now, he reversed and that wrist lock, <laughs> and he, he could be treacherous, but so far, uh, out of uh, Steve Ricard, we've seen nothing but scientific wrestling moves. It looks like a pull of the hair there by King Jerry Lawler. Referee Sammy Thompson asked him if it was a pull of the hair, and Jerry Lawler saying, no, absolutely not. It was just strength. Yeah. Tell you what. We'll be back, uh, Al, in just a second. Yeah. Let's go back to uh, Joe in the locker room and see what's happening in the back. Okay, take it away, Joe. Fans, we're backstage in the weight room here behind Aloha, and we've got uh, Jeff Magruder, who is lifting 500 pounds in preparation for later tonight. He's been warming up and uh, got to tell you how impressive it is to sit here and watch Jeff Magruder. That's 500 pounds you're watching him do. That's two reps. Three reps. Uh, amazing. I'm, yeah. We've also got with us. This is this is Spicy Williams. And Spicy, you are one of the top ladies wrestlers and weightlifters. And uh, some expert commentary on what we just saw. You want to hold this dumbbell? No, you can hold it. Huh. <laughs> That's some kind of wig. It's very, very rare. I practice. That is the world. I mean, this man could do so much. 500 pounds. 500 pounds. Well, you are a top weight lifter, lifter yourself. Obviously, this is a little bit out of your range. Yeah, obviously for right now. But, uh, you know, 225 pounds is a pretty good... That's what you do. That's exactly what I do just, uh, you know, for now. But I think you'll agree with me. We just saw one of the most impressive displays of weightlifting. Impressive, and this man is top in the field. Absolutely. And this is going to be nothing. This is going to be nothing until this man is in such great shape and in such incredible training. Let's go. Let's go back out to the action in the ring. Well, I'll tell you something. This is, this is really something. You saw four reps there, 500 pounds. That's a total of like 2,000 pounds. Oh, that's, that's a ton right there. Jeff Magruder, the uh, bench press champion, 242 pounds class. And I tell you, we've got the top talent here at this hot summer night number two at Aloha Stadium. In the ring right now, King Jerry Lawler uh, putting a reverse chin lock now on uh, the champion, current champion, that is, Steve Ricard. The belt is on the line. We'll find out who walks away with the belt at the end of this show, Cal. It looks really good for this show. Okay, I'll tell you what, this is back with more of the wrestling action. Stay with us, folks.
because we'll be back in just a second. Many people think Social Security is just retirement benefits, but it also plays a part in planning for retirement. Workers can invest in pensions, savings, and insurance to supplement their retirement benefits. benefits. And Social Security protects seriously disabled workers. And it makes payments to children under 18 if either parent gets retirement or disability benefits. If a parent That's why children get payments no matter how young they are. Social Security, a complete package for the young and the old. No. I want you to change the first thing that comes to your head. Car. Crash. Book. Bullet. Apple. Homicide. Relaxation. Firing range. Inspector Sledgehammer, you seem to have a preoccupation with guns all around. Let's make that personal, okay, Doc? Sledgehammer, coming this fall to ABC. Okay, wrestling fans, we're back here at Aloha Stadium on Hot Summer Night 2. Number one, the Yama Ripper Collins. And besides talking with Al Hines and Ernie Ripper, and boy, I'll tell you, this, this match is just action-packed between the New Zealand champ, Steve Ricard, and the challenger, King Jerry Lawler. Yes, that's Al Hines, who did a very fine job. But just like I was telling you a while ago, you watch Mr. Ricard now, because in New Zealand, they do a lot of wrestling, and they've got 25 different ways to get you in a hole, and you better have 25 ways to get out of it. Because they start when they're very, very young and they learn their wrestling. Well, experience is a key here, and I was noticing how he has been working on that left arm of Jerry Lawler, trying to wear it down, possibly going for a submission at some future time. But he's using arm bars on it, hammer locks, chicken wings, a whole series of holes dedicated right onto that left arm. He used to use the rolling short arm scissor for a pin. Oh, that's right. Yes, sir. That's Mr. right. Card is very, very apt to that hole. I tell you, a lot of pressure being put on right now on that head scissors by King Jerry Lawler. You can see from the expression on the face of the champion right now that he's in definite pain. And he's going to try and have to extricate himself. Trying to put some pressure on the feet to open up those scissors. This is where you're going to get your cauliflower ears. It'll certainly help watch this guy. Comes right up, grabs onto a side headlock, chin lock, and goes. Look at him. He's got that. He's got the left arm locked. Once right again, to that arm. That's what I told you, Dunbar. They get a hold and they'll hang on to it. If you break a bird's wing, it can't fly. King Terry Lawler is going to do some flying right now. He's uh, he, oh, right back down to the mat immediately. A lot of pressure being put on the wrist. Okay, foot over the rope. Calling for the break of Sam Sampson. Jerry Lawler reminding the referee that he's got to got to break the hole. Very slick move by Mr. Lawler. Right there. Break it, break it. Jerry Lawler complaining about the referee right now. But you notice Mr. Ricard is watching. He's not taking his eyes off. Not a bit. Steve Ricard, very very methodical. He's not prone to a lot of flashiness. You don't see uh, a lot of high vertical suplexes or drop kicks. Just good solid basic wrestling. Staggers King Jerry Lawler with a return right hand right to the chest. And Lawler doesn't know what to make of it. Well, well, Lawler, I think, is used to being the aggressive one, and he's not uh, used to someone coming right back at him. And that's where the experience of the more mature veteran comes through. And I'll tell you, some of these veterans, they'll make you wish that you had decided to start wrestling 10 years later because they'll take it to you right to your front door and knock on it open up and pull you right out. This Steve Ricard is one tough cookie and we all know his reputation. He's been a top wrestler for the last 10, 15 years all around the world. King Jerry Lawler using a karate-like shot to the throat. Snap there, sends this man down to the canvas, comes right off, vicious punch right to the forehead. That was a close fist to them, uh, right straight to the forehead. Well, I don't see him complaining about the referee at this point in time, because if the referee had caught that, he would have warned him. So, uh, I guess uh, King Jerry Lawler wants the referee to be all one side, his side. Count of one, two, two counts, good kick out by the champion. He got a little overconfident there. Steve Ricard firing back to the midsection now. Comes up again with the uppercut. Oh, oh, uppercut. King Jerry Lawler way down now. 
heading for the turnbuckle, head right into the top turnbuckle. He, he's going to have to clear the cobwebs away. There's another one for him, and Lawler really felt that. Ricard's on the warpath now. Throws him into the turnbuckle. I think Ricard is giving him a tip for a tap. Well, you know, they, they may say that Steve Ricard is a little older, but I'll tell you, he's still got that fire that made him a champion all these years. Well, I'll tell you, look at the rain coming down now. Oh, you see that? Uh -oh, uh -oh. He dropped him right over the top rope in a very bad position. Steve Ricard is jumping his pain. Referee Clark. Oh, that's a unsportsmanlike move by the King Jerry Lawler. And it looks like the referee Sammy Jensen has called it a disqualification. But the rain starts to fall. It looks like referee Sammy Jensen is going to award the match to the champion Steve Ricard for a very unsportsmanlike move by the King Jerry Lawler. Well, I think that just cost him a very prestigious title and lots of money. You see, ordinarily, we're under international rules now because this is a New Zealand match. Okay, and, uh, let's see what happened right here, Dunbar. One can slow motion. He picks him up, places him over the rope, and drops him right on that top rope, causing extreme pain to the champion. It's a disqualification on the part of King Jerry Lawler. Here's the ring announcer to uh, announce the final outcome of the match. Let's go up to the ring. It is a disqualification. A very bad one. That's why I was saying in professional wrestling that it's barred automatic disqualification. We're going to have to go to commercial down by wrestling fans. Stay with us, please. <laughs> Right across the knee there. Hi. Well, that's a 
two to two. Bill Kevin with an upper elbow. Billy Bozilli taking an awful lot of punishment at this point in time. Well, this little Kevin, he gets better and better every time we see him. Uh oh, looks like a pile driver. Ooh, good. 93 pounds coming right down to the forehead. One, two, and a hog out by Billy Bozilli. Outside the ring. Went right down by our table. And, I and he was down hard out here. All these cables and uh, television cables, and he missed the television box with equipment in it. He could have been hurt on that one very, very badly. Missed it by near inches. And I tell you something, take a look at this little Kevin. He's really feeling it. He must have landed on that left shoulder of his. It's Billy Bozilli, Doctor his man, getting set to... Uh, we'll, uh, we'll get back to the wrestling action in just a second, folks, so stay with us. World War II had a profound effect on our island, so far away the war didn't begin until well after Hitler's invasion of Poland. Herman Wuchs' winds of war traces the event leading to the attack at Pearl Harbor through one naval family. The oldest son, the pilot stationed at Pearl Harbor, living in the hills of Pearl City with his wife. The youngest son, a submariner. And the principal character, Captain Victor Henry, arrived in a way December 9, 1941 to take command of the battleship California. When you need a doctor, you've come to the right place. He's got a prescription for laughter. By Margaret Beaver. <laughs> oh, no. No, it's Margaret Beaver. I owe you for this. If you hadn't moved your practice home so I could try my career again, I'd never be on page one. The deal with her now, Hal, she's taking a shot at her career. Jason, this is head of the entire department. Careers face possible changes on Growing Pains, Tuesday night at 7.30. Okay, Dunbar, here we are. We're back in action right now. And Billy Bo Diddley with a nice shot in there. That wing's starting to get a little bit slick now from the range from above. Our blessings. But watch out. Oh, oh look out. Look out. He's going to go for the big headbutt, Dunbar. Whoa, whoa. Did you see that? Oh, Billy's got the start. He's seeing stars right now. The cover, and it's a count of one, two. That's it. Two. Henry said he's just going to back up again. <laughs> and then what? Is he going to count? Going to back up? Now, wait a minute. I, I don't quite understand what's happening here. Is this coercion or what? I know far. I've never seen that move where the referee gets thrown around where he throws the wrestler back on the bench. Well, I, I don't think Danny knew what to do with Billy Bo Dilly, so he just threw it back from where he came. <laughs> I'll tell you, the Mighty Midgets, they're very entertaining, they're very good, and they do come up with some very unorthodox moves. But look at powerful Now you see this, see little Kevin quickly down. One, two, that's it. Well, they to throw him on. Get the cat. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Uh-oh, wait a minute, he's going too far. Little Kevin got hurt there. Waiting for the pitch. This isn't baseball, this is wrestling now. Okay, quick lock up and a side headlock by Billy Bo Dilly. Yeah, two little guys have been giving it to him hot and heavy. And he's little Kevin, takes it uh, on the shoulder. Billy Bo Dilly, leapfrogging across, saying, where are you? <laughs> Me little Kevin is kind of dazed, not knowing what, he's looking up in the air. Oh, he takes a great big forearm. Gilly Bo, Gilly Bo Gilly said, look up in the sky at that star. <laughs> and he saw some stars, too. Takes his man off. He's standing by Bo Gilly. Quick cover, and it's a count of one. No, it's not a one and a half. Wait a minute. <laughs> there was a count of three, and there was no one on his man. I think Sammy Sampson must be caught up in the heading into the turnbuckle. Gilly Bo Gilly leaps <laughs> off. Mean little Kevin felt that one for sure. Uh -oh. Placing his legs up on top of the ring rope and kicking his man in the leg. Very legal because he's, he's using the top side of the foot. Kicking the thigh area there, absolutely legal. I think Bo Dilly's going to slow his man down now. Mean little Kevin. Receiving a lot of punishment at the hands of Billy Bo Dilly. Billy going into the rope. 
Down the top, shoulder block, puts Kevin down to the canvas. Kevin sitting down, both of them and Kelsey know. Jumps on the side, turns his back, reverse block, five, two, three, ball back, shoulder to the feet. Kelly, Paul Kelly, pulling that one out really quickly. I think that little Kevin was a little confused there, and he don't really know what happened, but both of them are going to dance for him. He certainly did. Kevin by Chili Bo Dilly, who's sensing victory. Look at this. Look at this. All the one time, and when he comes back, watch a little move here. Okay. He just grabs him on his feet, turns him over, small package hill, holds, bridges up immediately, and it's a count of three, and there's your winner. Chili Bo Dilly, the winner of the midget match. Woo! C.S. Wool brings you Bond and the Spy Who Loves Me Sunday night at 8. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest proves to be very exciting. In the ring at this time, from Leningrad, Russia, weighed in at 261 pounds, Alexa Nerva! Weighed in at 247 pounds, Bad News Allen! Oh, yes. Boy, yes. look at this. You know, jacket match, Dunbar. This is going to be a Bobby Dazzler here. Bad News oh. Allen, we all know, is a gold medalist in this kind of a match. Andrew Allen is uh, on the microphone now. Hey, Kenna, hey! You've been going around here telling everybody because you're from Russia. And that you beat you over there. That you're the number one judo man. And that you beat me many times in a judo contest. Now, is that true? A through your contest. It's obvious to me, and it's obvious to you, that this jerk is a liar. And the ultimate warrior brought two jackets down here. One with a white belt and a white jacket. One with a black belt and a black jacket. Let's see you put it on and let's see what you're going to do. Do you remember? Hey, look at this. The Russian has a white judo jacket huh? and a white belt, which is huh? the beginning entry level. And Bad News Allen has a black jacket and a black belt, and he knows. He knows. Is in for one night to remember. This is a judo jacket match requested by Bad News Out. You see, what led up to it, Ripper, was the fact that Alexis Smirnoff had been going around the world and telling people that he had beaten Bad News Allen, who, as you recall, was a judo champion of the United States, and he also was a uh, medalist in the Pan American Games. And he said that he, a Russian, could easily beat any U.S. man in a judo match. Well, the judo jackets did not go on this time. There's a little subterfuge there as Alexis Smirnoff immediately threw harder to Bad News Allen and took the match to him, coming from behind, grabbing him and jumping him over the top ring rope now. And Alexis Smirnoff is all fire action. Got it. Oh. See what happens to the USA athletes. But I'll tell you something right now. 
bad news Alice could come from behind at any point during this contest and turn it around and win it at a moment's notice. Bad news Alice trains constantly. He's in the gym. He works out. He practices on the mat and off the mat. He's in the weight room. He's on the road. And he can do it because he's physically fit. And he's about as good a U.S. champion as we've ever had here. And you know what? Dunbar, a lot of people are unaware of this fact that although he is from New York, he spends much time in Japan with judo and karate and the martial arts because he wants to continue to enter those contests and things to where that he can keep that black belt and still be the champion. And the Smirnoff has gone for a sleeper on Bad News Allen. Now, that's a new move for Smirnoff. But uh, let's see if he can get Bad News Allen out with it. Bad News Allen right now seems to be becoming to the sleeper hold. Referee Sammy Sampson checking two arms. Uh, uh, Bad News Allen still, still in there. He's working on it. Smirnoff trying to cut off the blood flow to the brain by pressure on that carotid artery. He's not able to do so. Bad News Allen brings him into the corner, but he's taking a terrible toll on Bad News Allen at this point in time. Allen's going to have to come from within. Dig deep to come back. Double shot. Well, we're going to have to we're going to have to go back to the locker room right now. We'll be right back, fans. Let's go to Joe in the locker room right now. We're back in the dressing room. Last week we saw Jeff Magruder press 500 pounds. Jeff, an 11-time world powerlifting champion, and now he is helping as we see Spicy Williams with 225 pounds as she gets ready for her match with Debbie the Killer Tomato. Very impressive as we see Spicy Williams getting ready. Jeff, you're working with her. You got her ready? 225 pounds. And look at that. Look at that. But she's going to do two. Two reps. This is a lady. This is a lady who's going to be in the ring a little later with Debbie the Killer Tomato. And we're watching her with 225 pounds. Jeff, quite an impressive lift. Very impressive. I've uh, competed all over the world internationally in powerlifting. And Bev Francis is one of the strongest bench pressers in the world today. But uh, with the proper attitude, I think I can help this gal train to... Uh, She's de definitely um, built for the lifting. She's hard, very muscular, and has good shape. What do you think, Debbie? Well, I don't know. What do you uh, spicy. What do you think, Spicy, about the match with Debbie? Yes, I know. Um, I think that um, I think that I got a good uh, good build and a good uh, attitude. I think I'm built for this sport. All right, let's go back to the ring. Okay, okay. unless the smearing off right now in the ring, taking a toll on Beth. As he's coming off with a series of shots now, and what appears to be a choke hold on the mat. Referee Sammy Sampson in there to make sure that the choke is broken up. Alexis Smirnoff breaking just enough time and then going right back to it again. Referee Sammy Sampson counting three. Smirnoff, with a punch right to the throat, is pulling out all the stops in this match. He wants to win here very badly. Well, he better follow him up. Then uh, Mr. Smirnoff may be ready to An elbow right into the Adams apple. Now. That's not a legal move, maneuver, and I'll tell you, Sammy Jensen was right there. Well, I can tell you right now that Mr. Smirnoff being... Oh, hello! Hello! Where was Bad News Allen when that move was made? And here we go. Look out, because he don't get the name Bad News for nothing. You can watch this man right now, because it's payback time, and Smirnoff is going to get it, I can guarantee you. Well, look at that. Bad News Allen coming off with a quick clothesline. Covers the man. One, two. That's it, Bad That big, mighty clothesline for Bad News Allen. And the Russian fights the duck. The Russian has fit the match. And Bad News Allen comes out on top. He's earned his name for a reputation like that, ladies and gentlemen. And he has done it. Watch it now. Watch it, Dunbar. Here we are in slow motion. Bad News Allen coming off immediately with that clothesline. Hits his man down on the canvas. Covers his man. Sammy Sampson down for the count. And it's immediate count of three. The match is won by Bad News Allen. There's the winner. Alexis Smirnoff covering his ears at this point in time, having lost the match by virtue of a clothesline. And a three count pin by Bad News Allen. It was a beautiful move that Allen came out of that corner with that clothesline, I can tell you now. That's what I did. He earned his name, Bad News Allen. The Bad News Allen is the winner of this match, and we're going to go to commercial wrestling fans. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more action. Runners.
this Tuesday night at 8. This is one of the main events of the evening in the ring with me at this time. 510 pounds, ladies and gentlemen, Grizzly Smith! This contest will be with a gentleman from Santa Fe, New Mexico. He says he can pick him up and slam him. Let's have a big welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for Cruiser. Another one of those cards. You gotta make sure we understand the rules. You must pick him up off the ground and slam him down. Now wait just a moment here. Wait just a moment here. Wait, wait just a moment. Now he has, he has first opportunity to slam him. Chris, come on up. Now that's the thing here. And maybe a part of those who's reaching the eye of suspension is risking another suspension. Chris, come on up. You can get down. Wait just a moment here. Wait just a moment. Who's the ready? Who's the ready? Who's the ready? Who's the ready? Who's the Frank is the first man with the 21,000 dollars. After they can count the money and take it to my bank account. They don't have no way to be out here during this event. Well, that's true. So get on over here, man. This is good. Who's the one right now? Now get on over here. No, 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 no. I just come over here now. There's 22,000 dollars sitting in the office. Sitting in wait just a moment. Can we get security here? Wait, wait just a moment here. Bruiser Rowling has signed the contract to a threat to this 510 pound Bruiser Smith. There is no contract signed for Maniac Mark Owen or Chris Kamala Mala. There is $22,000 in the office. Please stay out of the ring, gentlemen. You must pick him up off the ground and slam him. He 
Sheik has gone up into the strategic group. The strategic Lars Anderson coming out of the ring, heading over towards the grandstand area with a chair. The Sheik over the other side in the audience. Cruiser Cody and the Sheik in the audience seat. Now here at Aloha Stadium. And it seems like maybe I thought Lord and the Sheik are having a, a poor And it's because some fan, I think, took offense to the Sheik. And the Sheik went right after him up into the bleachers. And then Brody went in. Chris Smith went in. Uh, Kamala and the Maniac went in. And then Lars Anderson, he came to the rescue. And they were all six up there. Nobody knows where they're at now. But the bruiser is not. the chair away from Lars Anderson at this time. Both men fighting amongst the uh -huh. And there they go. Lee Grizzly Smith comes with a chair. Lee and this is pandemonium with the crowd here at Aloha Stadium. Well, I'll tell you what, it looks like the Maniac and the Sheik and Kamala were at their best. They did the big retreat once again, tried to inflict damage and uh, injury to someone, a major injury, we, and then head for the hills. We seem to be having a, a, a major new team here. We've got 510-pound Grizzly Smith, 6 foot 8 inch, the giant Bruiser Brody, and former Power Asian heavyweight champion Lars Anderson, all three of them together against the Sheik crew. Now, I'll tell you something. The Sheik, Maniac, Mark Lewis, and then the others. I, I, I don't know what I don't know what to say. Don't know what to say. Don't know what to say. Sonny, take it away. <laughs> but I do know that he's got a good piece of meat. I don't quite know what exactly happened. <laughs> And there, there are wrestling matters. Is there one for the Oh, I can't. Look at this. Look at this thing. We're going to watch the replay here. Now I know what Tom Grizzly said. It was supposed to be played by Bruce and Gordon. But the Sheik arrived with Chris and Kamala Mara and Maniac Mark Lewis. And all heck broke loose at this point in time. Lars Adams got an age. And all of a sudden, Bruce Brody was taking on Prince Kamala Mala at this time, also being hit by the Sheik at this point in time. And Lars Anderson was right from the scene. And it was absolute mayhem. But at the end of this match, Bruce Brody, look at this now, squaring off with Grizzly Smith. But they were both trying to tell each other something that they were both on the same time. I think we're now, and now look at this, if you will, 510 pounds, Grizzly Smith offering a hand of friendship to Bruiser Brody as long as Anderson looks on. And Bruiser Brody, not knowing what to think because he was supposed to have challenged this man, is now saying he came to the rescue of myself and my partners. And there's the hand of friendship between Grizzly Smith and Bruiser Brody. And if they team up with Lars Anderson, that's a formidable six-man tag team uh, 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 group of three that I just, I can't believe it. anywhere in the world and like I said look out world if those three team up six men tag team matches are going to dissolve around the country I'll tell you something right now when you get the life of a man like Grizzly Smith and the power of Bruce and Brody and you combine it with the mind of Lars Anderson you've got yourself a team that could take on virtually anybody and I'll bet you the challenges are going to be forthcoming it was unusual to see because Bruce and Brody and uh, Grizzly Smith were on the opposing sides at the beginning of this encounter. And then now, everybody's going after the Sheik. Now, here's where the Sheik went up inside of Aloha Stadium as we review this now. I think the fan has thrown the chair at the Sheik. 
And the Sheik went right after him. And then when he started down, and there's the maniac came up to join him and then out of nowhere there was Big Bruiser with the chair. Bruiser oh, strikes with a chair. And there's Kamala coming up the stairs now. I can't believe this. They go right in to the upper deck of the Loma Stadium. And there's Big Lars with another chair. There is absolute pandemonium. There comes 510 pounds. Grizzly Smith, and we got all six of them up there. They're going berserk up there, hanging on the side. It's a wonder one of them hadn't got thrown off the side there, Dunbar. But there's all six of them in action all over this place. I cannot believe Maybe what's going on. Maniac Mark Lewin had something to do with this, as did the Sheik. The Sheik has or orchestrated this thing because you take, you take a guy like the Sheik, who has no regard for the safety and, and values of any, anybody in the, in the world today, and then you add to it Maniac Mark Lewin, who we know is not all there all the time. And then you put them together uh, uh, along with Prince Kamala Mala, who doesn't speak any English at all. And what do you have there? A team that's fused in violence. And I'll tell you something right now. They've got their hands full because when you take Grizzly Smith, Lars Anderson, put them together with Bruiser Brody, you've got a team that can handle that kind of action in or out of the ring. So we saw Big Bruiser Brody earlier tonight with a big two before. And he can, he'll make two sticks out of that thing on these guys if they get out of line. Like, just look at him right there. Look at that man, Bruiser Brody. Would you like to meet him in a dark alley? I wouldn't want him with me after me if the National Guard was on my side. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to recap this thing real shortly before we have to cut away. And the fact is that the $22,000 challenge has turned into a new team in the making. We'll be back with more wrestling action. Stand by your television sets. We'll be back in a moment. Tuesday on KITV, it's Who's the Boss? Well, if you don't want Tony to leave, just get him to marry your mom. Hey, good idea. How do I do that? It's simple, you twerp. It's Valentine's Day. Oh, I don't believe it. What is it? It's here for you. <laughs> Jonathan plays Cupid on Who's the Boss, Tuesday night at 7. Being a father isn't easy, and I'm doing it by myself. But I'll turn my life inside out for my kids. I mean, teenagers are always changing, and I want to be there for them. So I do that by day, and by night, I'm a cop. It's not just a job, it's who I am. I want so much for my kids, and for myself. Heart of the City. So many feelings. So little time. Premiering this fall on ABC. When we've seen some spectacular action and a new tag team in the making this evening here at this hot summer night too at Aloha Stadium. And Ripper, I'll tell you something, it has been absolutely, unquestionably, some of the finest action I've ever seen. I'm going to tell you. I have never seen nothing like it. It gets better and better and better every week with Polynesian Championship Wrestling around the world from beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii, and from Aloha Stadium tonight. We say to you, join us next week, and aloha!